Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. You've heard the phrase, if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one there to hear it, does it make a sound? This thought experiment raises questions about observation and perception. The same principle can be applied to owning and operating a small business. In short, you don't know what you don't know. Unless, of course, there's someone to guide you. Let's join Keith Silva as he takes us to a sawmill in Fletcher where fallen trees find a home and contribute to growing businesses. At LSF Forest Products in Fletcher, every log has a home. We're sawing to order for the vast majority of the time that saw is running. As sawmills go, this one is small, but it fills a big niche for local builders. Tucker Riggs owns the business. We are a small softwood sawmill that primarily focuses on sawing timbers for the post of beam industry and rough cut dimensional lumber for homeowner and farmer and anybody else who would, um, needs to build something. In a sense, we are a custom mill. We don't saw for inventory. We don't just make a whole bunch of one by sixes to hope that somebody comes in and buys the one by sixes someday. Even though most of the wood in the lumber yard is spoken for, what's here speaks volumes about the lumber business nowadays. All in all, it has been um, crazy. In the last year and a half, it has been uh, extremely busy. We really haven't been able to keep any inventory in stock. So <laughs> it's been a challenge filling those um, orders for folks that would like to come in and pick up four two by fours. We just haven't been able to keep ahead of the demand um, to uh, make that happen. A booming housing market, along with shutdowns and shortages due to the pandemic, caused lumber prices to skyrocket. Earlier this year, prices hit an all-time high of $1,686 per thousand board feet, according to North Carolina State Extension. But in the last quarter of 2021, prices have seen a significant decrease, down to $710. Riggs hasn't experienced such drastic changes due to his business plan and personal values. We were on about a 10%, 12% um, growth a year. And then last year, um, we saw significant growth, about a 60% jump in sales in that time. And just have been trying to navigate you know, how much we can take on. We've only increased our prices slightly, um, knowing that the vast majority of our customers are neighbors. We're making a living, making a profit, and we bring our prices up, uh, but don't really drop them, and I don't feel like I need to, you know, match Home Depot. Um, we're really a different product. Riggs raised prices during the last year due to demand, and because he believes he should support the loggers who work the woods to keep him in business. I raised our prices about 10% to compensate, you know, for the additional revenue that we're bringing in, um, knowing that their cost of doing business um, has also increased. We are buying logs from our neighbors that are harvested by our neighbors, by loggers who live in this area. We're turning it into products, whether it be lumber for people to build with in this area in Northwestern Vermont. It's truly a Vermont-centered business where the whole cycle is in, in Vermont. As the business grew, Riggs knew he would need help to secure long-term success. We were at a point where I was trying to figure out how to grow, where to grow. I had a pretty good grasp on our numbers as far as our production levels, our profit and loss statement, but I really didn't have, you know, the level um, of understanding that I should have. You know, we had built the business from a tiny little portable sawmill and needed to try to get some of that information down on paper. Yeah, we should Helpful. definitely meet and talk about that. Yeah. Riggs contacted Chris Lindgren, a forest business educator with UVM Extensions Forest Business. 
Oftentimes your business can outgrow your ability to understand um, the implications of the accounting and the financials. So at a certain point, a lot of businesses you know, who come to me, that's where they're at. They're like, okay, we've grown, we're trying to understand where are we making profits? How can we grow most effectively more? How can we increase profits maybe without growing a whole lot? The recent fluctuations in lumber markets are one reason why Lindgren advises clients to always be vigilant, regardless of market booms or busts. It's fairly well known that growth can be as harmful and destructive to a business as lack of growth. Um, when, when you have too much going on, if you can't manage growth appropriately, you can not be careful enough with your costs because it seems like there's plenty of money coming in, um, and then there's always lots of money going out as well, and is it more going out than what is coming in. And it's been a good time for a lot of folks in the forest and wood products industry um, in Vermont. Demand for the smaller mills definitely spiked. Um, every small miller that I know has been busy, um, as they can work as much as they want, which is another important thing I work with businesses on, is you need to really understand where your costs are at so that you can make sure that you're charging the right amount of money for your product. Riggs' reason for working with UVM Extension Forest Business is because they know his business. UVM Extension put out information to us saying we are focused on the farm and the forest end of the industry and we want to help you to make that sustainable. If you want to support your neighbors, if you want to see the area that you're living in succeed, then you really should support those um, who are supporting that way of life around you. And that's why I reached out to UVM Extension to get that help and to get that perspective um, to help us um, grow and to help us understand our business better. The logs and lumber at LSF Forest Products that find their way into homes prove that Vermont is built on community support, expert advice, and hard work. In Fletcher, I'm Keith Silva with Across the Fence. Thank you, Keith, Tucker, and Chris. And joining us now via Zoom is Betsy Miller. Betsy is a farm management educator with UVM Extension Agricultural Business. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Wow, what a roller coaster ride everybody is going through in the forestry business. And uh, your program is one branch of UVM Extension's ag business. Talk about the services um, and the program that the program offers and the clients you work with. All right, so the forest viability program is housed, as Tucker mentioned, with the Farm and Forest Viability Program. So really the, the core focus of the overarching program is to help business owners become better business managers, to help educate them in those business matters. Most of the people we encounter are, are really good on the production side. They know their job, they know what they're doing, but that business side of it is something that, that's a challenge for them. And so we step in, we have a variety of services, including full business planning, which is a you know, lengthy process, which focuses on first off, understanding where your business is currently and setting goals and figuring out where you want to be in three to five years. And, you know, what's the best way to get there? We also offer workshops, um, individual coaching sessions, which are typically an annual event. Sometimes it's devoted to helping a business owner put together those financial statements, balance sheets and profit and loss so that they have those to assess their business annually. Um, sometimes it's just they have a new idea that they want to bounce off somebody. Hmm. Um, new this year, we formed a focus group that's um, a group of forest business industry owners where they meet about once a month and they talk about challenges that they're facing and they share ideas. And, you know, it's really about sharing, you know, their experiences. Well, okay. Terrific. Um, you, you know, what makes ag business planning different from financial planning for other small businesses? Is, are, are there differences? Well, there, there are differences, but, you know, we actually focus on that it's not so different, that hmm. you're a business owner first and foremost, and you're going to face the f same challenges that any small business owner faces. You know, today there's, there's labor challenges, how to find and keep good labor, you know, how do you hmm. provide benefits for employees, how do you plan for retirement? How do you find the time to be, you know, both the manager of the business and labor involved in the mm -hmm. business? Um, you know, I think most of the challenges 
logger is probably the best example because they're out working in a natural environment and so they're facing weather which is you know harder when you're doing a cash flow projection to you know assess what that weather impact for that particular year is going to be um, it's really more from our perspective when we're pairing a business with a business advisor finding someone that has knowledge of that industry so that they can help them the best they yeah, can. Absolutely. So, and, and how does a forest business fit into what's often referred to as Vermont's working landscape? Where does it fit in? So forest covers almost 80% of the state. So it's a pretty big piece of that landscape to start with. Um, and forest businesses, you know, they manage that forest, they harvest from it, they utilize the forest products that are coming in. You know, I, I like to think of the forest business as, as, as like farmers are to farmland. You know, they, they maintain it. They, they keep it productive. Well, and, and does wood harvested in Vermont stay in Vermont? Um, is it mainly used for, for um, Vermont products or does it go out like, like milk or, or produce? Some of it stays, some of it goes. Um, you know, we all see firewood, you know, trucks going down, maybe we buy it ourselves. So that's a big piece of it. Um, lumber is used in state building materials. Um, there's artisan wood makers that are using you know, as much local wood as they can, because that's important for them to create a, you know, as much of Vermont product as they can. Um, one of, Chris is working with one of those through his discussion group, and they were bringing up the importance to them of, of the Vermont product. Um, but, but much like milk, it really is important that we have those out-of-state markets, you know, for yeah. a healthy economy. Absolutely. And, and, and quickly, what does a sustainable forest economy look like in Vermont? So... I think, you know, a diverse market for the products, you know, the estimate is that 70 to 75% of the wood in forests is of low quality. So having a market, a place for that to go, um, having enough value in the end product so that there's a profit for each of those, you know, people that contribute down the value chain, um, sustainable management of the woods so that they continue to be productive. Lumber can be a never ending resource if it's managed properly. Right. Um, Forest business owners that have good business management skills, um, continued innovation to reduce environmental impact, um, increase efficiency and safety for loggers in the woods. Well, Betsy, we've, we've got to go, but thank you so much for strengthening our forest uh, economy and, uh, and making it easier for fo folks out there. Thank you so much. And for more information about UVM Extension's Agricultural Business Program, you can visit the website on, on the screen. You'll find the full slate of services and resources, as well as a link to sign up for one-on-one -on -one business coaching via video conferencing. And that's our program for today. Thank you so much for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well. Thank you.